as I was editing this video I realized that it's a rather long video but I want to let you guys know that it is packed with you know good information and it'll be worth your time to watch the video until the very end hey what's up everybody it's David McGill now in this video I'm gonna explain why I started my trucking business by buying a Max Force truck when everybody else said to stay away from it. Now the point of this video isn't to convince anybody out there to buy a Max Force truck. The point of this video is to give you guys a process and a framework to follow when you make business decisions of your own. Now without having your own framework, you know, you're probably gonna be more dependent upon everybody else's opinion. Now, that's not necessarily, you know, that may not necessarily be the best way to, you know, make business decisions for your business. Oftentimes, we fall victim to a concept called groupthink. Now, if you're unfamiliar with the concept of groupthink, let me try to give you an example. If I showed you a picture of a square and said, hey, what do you think this is? And you look at it and you see that it's a square, but I tell you, hey, the last hundred people who saw this, they all agree that this was a circle. Well, even though you think it's a square, you know for sure it's a square, the fact that I'm telling you that majority of the people out there who looked at this picture saw a circle, it may cause you to second guess whether or not you were actually looking at a square. Now, as entrepreneurs, we're the ones who typically try to avoid group think. So that's why I'm gonna give you this framework and help you understand, you know, the thought process I had when I bought my Max Force trucks. Now, if you've ever searched for a used truck online, you would have noticed that the International Pro Stars from 2010 to 2013 that had Max Force engines were generally a lot cheaper than the other trucks that were for sale. Now, if you've done any further research and you know read any you know forms about those trucks, then you would have also seen like some of the uh, you know opinions that most people have about those trucks, where they say to stay away from them and they call them junk and they say the engines are crappy, you know, and things like that. It's it's not hard to you know find somebody who has a negative opinion on you know Max Force Max Force trucks. Now, I saw those opinions, however, like that, I couldn't just say because somebody else said to stay away from them, I needed to stay away from them. What I wanted to find out was, you know, why? What's wrong with the trucks? Like, why would you stay away from them? Um, instead of just, you know, telling me it's not good, I kind of need, I'm, I'm more analytical than that, so I kind of need to understand, you know, why I should stay away from them. And usually when I ask people, why exactly should I stay away from them, I never really could get a straight answer. Um, the, one of the most straightest answers I, was, I got was um, their DPF systems are, you know, pretty crappy. Now, I wanted to understand, you know, was this something that could be fixed? Um, is it just overall crappy? Like what, like, what about it made it crappy? Like, if it, are you just doomed from day one? Like, what exactly is it? And I never really could get, you know, a, a straight answer. Some of the things that I heard was, hey, I know somebody who bought a truck and it had these problems. Or I know somebody else who bought a Max Force truck and here were the list of problems that they had. And I guess part of what my thinking was, like, was if there are trucks that, you know, have, you know, bad engines, does that mean every truck on the assembly line had a bad engine or was it a batch of them? Like what exactly created this engine problem? And you know, nobody was ever really get, able to give me a, you know, a straight answer on that. Now, when I found my first truck, I was talking to the used car, I was talking to the used truck dealer. Um, his name is Gerard. You know, he gave me some, you know, some inside advice on, you know, certain things to look for in those trucks. And, you know, he, he raised a good point where he let me know it's like not all of those trucks are bad. Like, you know, 
some of them were bad, but not all of them were. Now the thing is, you can't predict which one is gonna be the one that's gonna go out on you. You, you don't know. You know, nobody really has a crystal ball when it comes to buying used trucks. So I understood that, you know, before I made my purchase. Now, something else to consider, um, I did hear that those trucks didn't have a lot of power and they weren't good for uh, heavy hauling. Now, I don't know if that is completely true or not, but that is something that I heard and that was something that I took into consideration. Now, on the loads that I was attempting to get and the ones that I had on my, my goal list when I started my trucking company, I already knew that these loads were light loads. They were anywhere from eight to 12,000 pounds. And they also weren't going very far. Um, it, they were going about 150 miles. So we're talking, you know, 300 mile round trip days with light loads. And if my, if my forecasts were correct, um, I would be profiting about five to $6,000 per month per truck on those particular loads. So the fact that I was able to get the Max Force trucks very cheap, um, I was getting them anywhere from thirteen to sixteen thousand dollars, without you know before uh, before any warranties. Now, just doing the you know just doing the math, I'm like, all right, let's just say that I can make five thousand a month per truck profit, based on the runs that I was going to be going after. If I can get the truck for let's say fifteen thousand dollars. Theoretically, I only need a truck to last for 90 days. Like that's that's the gamble right there. If the truck lasts 90 days, I recoup my money and now I'm playing with house money. So if the truck goes out on day 91, but I've already made my money back, then it was a gamble worth taking. Now, if the truck goes out prior to the 90 day, to the 90 day mark, then, you know, I, I lose my money to also help hedge that bet that the truck will last 90 days, you know, I bought the extended warranties on the trucks. Now, I know there's gonna be some people out there who's gonna say warranties don't matter and warranties are crap and warranty companies don't pay. Well, for sake of this conversation, that's irrelevant because that was part of the rationale I had going into um, purchasing the truck. So. At that time, I wouldn't have known whether or not warranty companies actually pay her, or if they did, if they didn't. But um, that was just one of the things that I used to help hedge my bet on buying those trucks, or at least buying my first truck. Now, when I put my first truck on the road, I was eventually able to find a broker who had some pretty consistent freight from a shipper that was going to the same place every day and it was able to have my driver home in the same day. So I ran that load as often as I could and I was profiting about $4,000 net profit each month with that, with that first truck. Now, when I found a second driver who was willing to work full time, I had to make a decision on if I wanted to, you know, buy another Max Force truck. I knew I was able to get a good deal on the second one also, just because, you know, the reputation of those trucks drop, you know, drives the prices down on them. So the same way I had a hypothesis on the first truck and I went ahead and pulled the trigger after I weighed the pros and the cons, I did the same thing for the second truck. Um, in my mind, I had kind of proven out that, you know, my hypothesis was correct and that it was worth, you know, investigating even further and rolling the dice again. So I bought my second truck. Now with this truck, I was a lot more confident in making the decision to buy it because I had already had pretty good experiences with the first truck. Now, if you remember earlier in the video, I said that there were some people who pointed out that those trucks weren't good for, um, hauling heavy loads, but we were actually hauling heavy loads. 
and they also said that they wouldn't be good for long distances now i remember if i remember correctly the very first lane that i had that consistent lane i believe it was about 450 or so round trip miles every day so we were hauling heavy and you know driving between four and five hundred miles a day so to me the experience from the first truck you know gave me the confidence to pull the trigger the second time now i'm not gonna sit here and pretend like i've never had any issues with my trucks because you know anybody who anybody who says that it, you know they're probably telling the bold-faced lie now the thing about the issues i've had with my trucks none of them have been specifically related to them being max force engines now i've had some of the issues i've had with my trucks um i've had a, a fuel pump that needed to be changed um, i've had starters go out i've had alternators that needed to be replaced i've had batteries that need to be replaced um i replaced a turbo on one of my trucks um and I, I can't really think, you know, of the other stuff right on the top of my head, but none of that stuff was specific to Max Force. That was just used trucks and, you know, trucking business problems. So again, I'm not I'm not trying to convince you guys to go out and buy Max Force trucks. I'm only trying to give you guys a framework to follow when it's time for you to make business decisions because as an entrepreneur, you're gonna be making business decisions every day. Now, do you wanna solely rely on the opinions of other people when you make those decisions or do you wanna have a process and a framework to follow that'll help, give you, like, that'll help you make those decisions on your own? So hopefully you were able to you know, get that from this video. Now I want to actually go into the status that I posted on YouTube that was previewing this video and you know read some of those comments. So Polo Trucker, he said he bought his Max Force engine with 300,000 miles and today he has 750,000 miles. L. Simpson, he said, I bought mine with 400,000 miles on it, about the same problems I would have with any other truck. Routine maintenance is the key and they are a good price. My thinking was somebody put 400,000 miles on it. I have had it for two years. Now it has paid for itself. Now he actually just pointed out something else that I forgot to um, mention. The first truck I bought, it only had 266,000 miles on it. So to have such a low price and low miles you know it was worth me you know doing further research to see if, you know if that made sense another comment from call me gerard this is uh he's actually the the salesman that i met when i bought my first bought my first truck and i've since bought you know four trucks from him um, he says as the number one pre-owned max force salesman in the nation from 2015 to 2018 while working for the largest truck dealership and a personal friend of Mr. McGill, I can assure you that this will be well worth your time to watch. I right, well, shout out to Gerard. Let's see, I'm, on, I'm looking for some comments from some other Max Force owners. Okay, so Dale said, there is nothing wrong with the Max Force engine. You have to delete. The trucks run great. Now, I'm not gonna go into you know the, the delete because that's not something that I've actually done, but I have heard of you know guys who have done you know done that process and you know they were pretty satisfied, but that's not something that I have any personal experience with. Uh, Jesus, he said he bought I bought mine with 2013 Max Force at 280,000. Now it has 550. I made a delete and it paid off for itself in the first couple of months. Great starter truck. Always keeping maintenance up to date and it worked out good. Let's see, now we have one that, you know, not so good from Jackknife. 
I bought one, it ran awesome for four months, then the EGR cooler went out. If you can fix it yourself, it's about a thousand dollars or so and about 20 or so hours of work. A dealership charges anywhere from 6,000 to 8,000. So therein lies the downfall. As I was editing the video, I realized I left out some information. So what I wanna point out is, before I bought those trucks, I was able to get a report from the dealership where I bought them from that showed what the repair history was on each of those trucks. So I was able to see, you know, all the stuff that had been replaced and updated on those trucks. So that further helped my decision making process when it came to deciding whether or not I wanted to take the gamble on those particular trucks. I was able to uh, eliminate some of the potential problems that I would face because they had been performed already before I bought those trucks. Doris. Here's a, here's a good one. Let people hate this motor. It keeps the prices low. I, I agree with that. And that's, so actually when I was going back to the same dealer, when I was going back to Gerard to buy, you know, more trucks, I kept noticing that the inventory of Maxwell trucks um, were going down. And so I had asked him, hey man, what, what's, what's up with that? Why are people starting to, you know, buy these? And uh, he kind of spoke to the same, spoke to the same thing as, as Stars. He was saying, you know, well, basically the, the word starting to spread that hey you know these trucks are cheap and you know maybe they're not all you know not all bad now so so let, let, let's go back to that for a second you know all of the trucks being bad i don't know if if you've ever had a car that um, had a recall or had an issue on it that you know majority of the cars of your particular year making model had like you might have got like a card in the mail that says hey um your car may have uh may have experienced this certain issue um so because of that we're going to recall it you bring it into the dealer and we're going to fix we're going to fix that issue you know free of charge well i've received probably like three of those um uh in like when i was driving a, a 2001 grand prix and all of the issues that were coming back on the uh, the recalls, I never experienced those issues with my particular car. Now, that same, you know, that same logic is what I use when I was thinking about those Max Forces. It's like, man, did every one of these trucks off the assembly line have the same issue? Like, I don't know, but like my gut tells me that, that they, they didn't, you know, it was just, there's some probably just some bad apples in the bunch that pretty much ruined the reputation for for all of them. Here's another, you know, I'll go one last comment off the, the YouTube. Um, I'm not sure how to pronounce this person's name, name Amir. Uh, he says, please convince me with sound logic back back with proof by buying any Max Force makes sense, please. Now that's the thing, uh, Mr. Amir. Like I'm not trying to convince you know anybody to do anything um I, I honestly don't don't care what what truck you buy um you know the whole whole point of the video is to show you guys that you need to have a framework and a process to help you make business decisions now you could go through this entire framework and then decide that this isn't the decision that you should make uh, you know, maybe you go through this process and you see, ah, you know what? It's not worth the risk. Or you might go through this process and decide that it is worth the risk. But regardless, you now have, you know, a process to use. Like always, uh, I hope you guys found this video helpful. And if you did, please give it a thumbs up. Um, if you have anything you'd like to add, go ahead and leave a comment below. Um, check out the description box for more information. Um, if you know somebody that can benefit from this information, please feel free to share this video with them also. And as always, thanks again for watching.